Lost Prophets singer Ian Watkins has been sentenced to 35 years in prison for a string of child sex offenses including the attempted rape of a baby. Watkins, 36, from Pontypridd, pleaded guilty at Cardiff Crown Court last month to 13 child sex offenses. His two co-defendants, who are the mothers of children he abused, were jailed for 14 and 17 years. Sentencing the three, Mr Justice Royce said the case broke new ground and plunged into new depths of depravity. Watkins was sentenced to 29 years in prison with a further six years on license, but he will be eligible for parole after serving two-thirds of the prison term. He was sentenced alongside the two mothers known as Womana and Woman B who also pleaded guilty to child abuse charges. Womana was jailed for 14 years and Woman B was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Watkins admitted the attempted rape and sexual assault of a child under 13 but pleaded not guilty to rape. He also admitted conspiring to rape a child, three counts of sexual assault involving children, seven involving taking making or possessing indecent images of children and one of possessing an extreme pornographic image involving a sex act on an animal. During sentencing, Mr Justice Royce said, those who have appeared in these courts over many years, see here, a large number of horrific cases, he said. This case breaks new ground. Any decent person will experience shock, revulsion and incredulity. He added it was a classic case that the evidence was so overwhelming there should not be credit given. The judge said Watkins had a corrupting influence, and had shown a complete lack of remorse. He also said Watkins posed a significant risk to the public in particular to women with young children. He told woman A, what you are both doing is both sickening and incomprehensible and said to woman B that she did not regard her child as a human being. Earlier on Wednesday. Defending barrister Sally O'Neill QC how Watkins belatedly realized the gravity of what happened and was deeply, deeply sorry. She told the court how he had developed an obsession with filming himself having sex and had become addicted to drugs at the age of 30. She said Watkins had no memory of the crime involving woman and her son, where he admitted to the attempted rape of a baby. Because he had no memory he could not believe he had done that, she said adding he had now confronted reality over what he had done. Watkins was on 15-minute suicide watch while on remand, the court heard. Jonathan Fuller QC, defending for woman A, said she felt genuine remorse and was devastated by what she had done. Kristin Lane QC, defending woman B, said she was clearly remorseful for her behavior and the loss of her child was her punishment. Meanwhile, South Wales police are investigating whether Watkins also committed offences in Germany and America and the IPCC has confirmed it was investigating three police forces over the case. Detective Chief Inspector Peter Doyle, senior investigating officer, said the sentences reflected the gravity of the crimes and the investigation uncovered the most disturbing child abuse evidence he had seen in his 28 years as an officer. Today's sentence does not mark the end of our investigations and we will work tirelessly to identify any other victims or witnesses and seek the justice they deserve. In the last few weeks we have received further information that will now be looked at by the investigation team. Earlier he said the investigation was large scale because the amount of data involved, 27 terabytes, was four or five times the size of the databases held by South Wales Police. And he said how he was sure there were other child victims. Suzanne Thomas, senior Crown Prosecutor at CPS Wales, said Watkins was the ringleader and the defendants conspired to commit appalling crimes of abuse against young and defenceless victims. She added, he is a highly dangerous and manipulative individual who preyed on his victims in a calculated manner. The other two defendants were active participants in the most shocking abuse of their own children. They too have received sentences that reflect their admissions of guilt for these offences. It is incomprehensible that adults would commit such appalling acts against children and young people and our thoughts remain with the victims and those close to them.